Hello everybody, how's it going? My name is Leo, also known as Noctef, and today we're gonna be making a fake stencil slash parallax looking thing. It's kind of hard to explain, but uh, here is the final result captured in engine. Uh, we are using Unity and Amplify Shader Editor. As always, you can use any shader graph uh, application you like. If you know your way around the shaders and the nodes, you can just kind of mix and match them. It doesn't really matter. I personally prefer Amplify, so this is why I use it for pretty much everything I do. Uh, one interesting thing about this is that uh, this sparked from me looking at League of Legends VFX and trying to decide how do they achieve certain effects. So a great example of this is that sometimes League of Legends uses stencils for their VFX. A great example of this is Mordekaiser's Ultimate. This is not what we're doing today. That's a different technique that I might teach in the future. What we're doing today is this fake parallax effect that they also use extensively. So um, this research and development project of mine started when I saw some VFX from League of Legends that had depth, a stencil-like effect, but also they faded in and out, they had erosion maps, the, the mask uh, for the actual edges that separates the background for the foreground, uh, they were moving, animating, and changing in opacity. So I thought, hey, this is not a stencil effect, it's something else. And after a little bit of research and development, I found this effect that works really well, and I'm somewhat confident it is what they use when they want to get a little bit of depth on their VFX, but not quite commit to using stencils. So, uh, it's a pretty cool effect, kind of hard to describe, uh, but as always, I'm going to teach you along every step of the way. Uh, and uh, we're using, once again, Amplify and Unity. The textures are really minimal. You can do whatever you want. And the effects is incredibly, the, the shader is incredibly flexible. So let's jump into the engine. Alrighty, folks. Alrighty, folks. So here we have the final result on Unity. And uh, let's inspect it a little bit so you can see here kind of the effect that I have. I prepared two examples, this little cosmic star pattern here. And uh, this one in particular, it's very easy to see what the shader is doing. Uh, you can kind of tell that it has this fake depth, right? And this is just, and uh, it works pretty damn well, as you can see here. Now, perhaps a more realistic example of this usage here is for example something like a blast mark right so it's kind of like seeping into the ground and you can see here the type of effect that we can get uh from that so here we have these um blast marks from an explosion like a like a magical explosion or something like that and i'm using a very twirly very mystical texture here and you can see that it works rather well and uh yeah, let's let's start building the shaders. So uh, this can work in any version of Unity, any pipeline. It doesn't matter. Uh, of course, I'm going to be using here Amplify Shader Editor. You can probably follow along and do this in Shader Graph, but do keep in mind that some things are going to be inevitably different uh, between the programs. So let's create here a new shader. And let's make it just a unlit shader. Alrighty, folks. So here we have the shader graph open. So we're going to do a couple of setup settings here, some boilerplate code. So in my case, I'm using uh, the HDRP pipeline. So, you know, I'm, I'm just going to make my shader unlit on HDRP. Of course, if you're using URP or standard, uh, it's going to differ, but uh, that's just a little bit of setup. I'm going to make my shader transparent and I'm going to keep it at alpha. And uh, I believe every other setting we can keep the same here. So let's go. So the first thing we're going to do here is that we're just going to make a new texture node. So you can hold T and click. And this is going to be our masking layer, right? So this is going to be the blast mark, for example, right? So that is more or less uh, the, the masking layer there. So for now, we're just going to hook this up into the color, into the emission, and the alpha channel here into the alpha. And uh, let, let me just select a random texture here to put in there. 
So let's search for blast here and just see what I can kind of find. So what I ended up going for there is just a generic uh, star pattern. So what I'm going to do here is that just for showcase purposes, I'm going to create a new material based here on this uh, tutorial shader. And you all will very quickly realize that if I take a plane here and I apply this material, it's just going to be the same thing as an unlit default you know, particle shader, and nothing much is going on here. But this is going to be our basis for everything else. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to create the layers. And the key here is that we are going to use parallax. So the idea is that we're going to take a new texture, right? And this is going to be our, let's call it parallax texture. And this texture, we're going to manipulate the UV in such a way that the UV gets skewed based on the view direction of the camera. So as the camera moves around the textures, the, the, the UV of the textures is going to be manipulated, skewed, and messed with in a way that it looks like it's reacting to the camera movement, so it looks like it's either further away or closer to the camera. It's a really neat trick. So let's begin. So what we're going to begin here is that we're going to create a new parameter here, and we're going to call this parameter something like subsurface scale. We're also going to need a new parameter for the scale of our actual parallax. So let's call this one parallax scale. If I take, for example, a UV node, so you can hold U and click this texture coordinate node here, we can put this subsurface scale as our tiling on the UV node. And what's going to happen is that this is going to control the tiling of the noise itself. This is not quite parallax yet. And what we're going to do for the offset here is that we're going to invert this. So we make the offset negative and we can do this by doing one minus and we're going to multiply it by 0.5, which essentially means we're going to be having whatever that value is. And we're going to put this into the offset. The reason why we're doing this, it's because we want to change the origin of this texture coordinates. Why do we want to change the origin of it? Well, it's because we're going to actually add some logic into it. And since we are adding these numbers in, we want to make sure that this thing starts in the middle so that it kind of scales evenly from the, from the middle outwards. So also here for the subsurface scale, let's just set a default value of two for now. And for parallax scale, we can also set a default value of two for now as well. So what we're gonna do is that we're gonna drag this node here and we're gonna make a new node called parallax offset. We're not gonna put this into the H value there. We're gonna put this into the height. You can leave the H at zero and you can see here that we have this view direction node, which is in tangent space. So this means that what it wants is view direction. And we want to make sure to change the space here to tangent instead of roll. You don't need to normalize it. And we're going to drag and drop this here. And this is going to generate some UV magic that when we add it to this one, we're going to have our parallax effect. Now. There's one problem here. You can probably tell that when we add this, this preview is not really a 2D UV set. And uh, there's a quick and easy way to fix this, especially on Amplify, which is a node called Vertex to Fragment. So you can go here, and whenever we do this, we're gonna turn this into a usable UV set. So if I plug this into my UV, and I select here a random noise, let's say this one, you can see here that now our UV sets are properly working and uh, we have this noise being sampled and of course it is being slightly tiled by these two values here. But now what we can do is that we can hook this up into the color and into the emission here so that we can test it out for ourselves and see what it looks like on the engine. All right, so you can see here what this looks like in the engine. And uh, you can tell that as I move my camera around, hopefully it's very visible that the mask looks like it is on the ground level, but the texture looks like it is further away. And I can accentuate that by increasing the parallax scale here. And you can see that we get more of this effect 
and it looks like it's further away. Now the problem here is that this doesn't look as convincing as this one, right? And the reason for that, it's because on this one, I have three layers of parallax, one on top of each other. And also the base layer, I have a spherical transformation on the UVs. And you can see here, it kind of looks like there's a middle sphere that expands into the void. And this also really, really helps accentuate and sell the effect. This is what we're going to do here to improve this shader. We're going to add extra layers to it and we're going to spherize one of the UV sets. So let's begin by making the spherical effect. So let me just move all of these fellas over here to the side. We're gonna add a new piece of logic here. Thankfully, once again, Amplify has everything easy for us. So you have this node called Spherize, which as the name implies, turns into a sphere. We're gonna put our vertex to fragment into the UV there. And uh, here we have a strength value and an offset value. So we're actually gonna expose those as variables. So we're gonna make here Spherize Strength we're going to make it a pretty high value, like minus 10, for example. We're going to plug this into the strength. And finally, we have uh, the offset. The offset doesn't matter as much, but it is nice to have. So I put this a value of 3, but you can see here what the offset is doing. And uh, in general, pretty much any value is going to work fine. Uh, it depends on really the size that you want the spherical effect to be and how much you want it to fade into the edges. Now that we have this, there's another way that we can even improve this further, which is by adding a panner. So panner essentially is going to move the UVs over lifetime. So what we're going to do here is that we're going to make a new property and this is going to be spherized UVs Panner. And um, we can put this at a default value of like 0.1, a very low value here. And if we put this into the speed and we plug this in, you're going to notice now what it's doing to our actual texture. If I save this out and I look at it in the world, it's going to be a lot bigger. Here it looks very, very tiny and very puny, but uh, it's not going to look that small once you go here into the world. And you can see here, well, this one is still looking pretty tiny. We can adjust the values. That's why we expose them as variables. But um, you can kind of see here that now when I move the camera around, it's pretty, pretty, pretty obvious uh, that uh, this thing is reacting to the camera. Now, as I said before, we can adjust the values here. Ooh. This one in particular, I kind of like. It almost looks like the edges are stretching inwards, right, towards the camera. I think this one in particular, I was just messing with the values here and I found out this one in particular works really nicely. So we're gonna keep it at this for now. Let's work on adding some extra layers here. So we're gonna copy over a bunch of this logic here. So for example, we're gonna copy over most of these little elements here parallax offset in the view direction. And what we're going to do is that we're going to take a new texture by pressing T. And instead of being an object, we're going to make it a reference. And here in the reference field, we're going to say that it's a reference to our parallax texture. So now we're sampling the same texture that we're sampling here. Now you could use different textures. I am personally just choosing to use the same texture but you could have three distinct textures working alongside each other. I just personally like the same texture with three layers. I think it looks best, but hey, feel free to experiment. Usually this type of stuff, it's more about the art you're trying to achieve, right? So let's plug here this into the UV and let's mess a little bit with these parameters. Actually, we are going to also add a panner here so we can put this UV here. We can create a new float make it a property and let's make it panner. I'm just going to keep it as panner and uh, let's add a default value of 0.1. Plug this into the speed and now we can put here into the UVs. We want to use this, these same variables here, but in general, we also want these variables to be smaller and smaller as we go through so that we get the impression that the layers are on different heights. So for example, here on the parallax scale, we can multiply this by 0.5. And by doing so, it, it is the same as essentially having the value 
of this uh, value here. Now we can plug this into the height and here on our subsurface scale, we can put this into the tiling and here into the offset, you can plug the same parallax scale into the one minus. This is gonna generate some nice variation here. And now we have one layer of a camera adapting texture. So what we can do is that we can once again, kind of just copy over all of this. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna take my pen or variable, plug it back into the speed, right? And in here, I'm gonna take the result of this multiplication, which is by 0.5, and I'm gonna multiply it again by 0.5. So now this is the same as me multiplying the original value by 0.25. Now, this is gonna be, you know, 1 25th of, of the height. And I also need to get here my subsurface scale once again, and drag and drop this into the tiling value there. Great, so now we have three layers, one of them, which is spherical, and two of them, which are flat. What I'm gonna do is that I'm going to create a couple of multiplies here on the middle of these nodes. And I'm gonna multiply everything by the same value. So let me just plug here my multiplies. Now I'm gonna create a constant. This doesn't need to be exposed. And I'm gonna make this 0.33, right? Because if you divide one by three, it's gonna be point, you know, it's gonna be 0 0.3333 into infinity. We're just gonna multiply everything by 0.33, which is kind of the same as dividing by three, right? So we're dividing these values by three, but once again, multiplying is cheaper than dividing. This is why we're choosing to do it this way. And now that these values are all divided by three, we're gonna add them up together. Now, why don't we just straight up add them, you may ask? Well, if we do that, our values are gonna get a little bit huge because this has a little bit of white in it, which is one. This has a little bit of white in it, which is one. And this has two. So when you add all of those things together, it's inevitably going to bleed over one and generate bloom. And once again, this might be desired, but um, if I were to add bloom to this effect, I would make a multiplier at the end that you can control this way you're gonna have control over the VFX. And now you have a choice to make. You can either multiply this by this, right? So you're multiplying the mask with your parallax layers, or you can straight up just plug the result of the additions into the color animation. It's really an artistical choice if you wanna have control over the color using the mask, which is sometimes desirable, sometimes not. You know, it's up to you, it's your call. So I'm gonna save this out. You're gonna very quickly realize that we're gonna get straight out of the box the same effect from the previous shader, unless I have done something wrong, which I don't think I have. But uh, hooray, look, now as we move the camera, it looks a lot more like we have a parallax effect that is indeed with this fake depth. Looks pretty cool to me. And of course, all of these parameters, you can manipulate them and get different results from them. For example, if I mess there with a little bit of the spherization, you can change the parallax scale, be really close or really further away. So yeah, this is the tutorial. And of course, you can change these textures here, so I can change our noise texture, for example. Let me make it this fiery looking texture here, for example. I can change the mask itself, so I can, for example, let's try this one. Look at this. Pretty cool, huh? And this is a nice way of enhancing your visual effects. This is also great for portals, right? So if you want to make a portal type of VFX, this type of parallax works great. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more tutorials where that came from. And also, you can always check out our Discord server. On our Discord, you can showcase your game, you can showcase uh, any project you have, any art project, code, anything goes. You can also ask questions to me and William directly and keep up to date on what we're doing with Peloto Studio in regards to game development, uh, Unity asset stores, or even new tutorials that are coming soon. So, uh, as always, leave a comment telling me what you think and suggestions are always welcome. Thank you so much and goodbye.